Who can you help today on April the 27th with 249 days left in the year? Think about it. And if you're new here, why don't you subscribe to the channel or share this with a friend? We need more subscribers. So I'm encouraging everyone, find somebody that you can share this with and invite them to join us each day. 10 minutes of devotion, fun facts, and jokes. So let's get into it. Psalm 6, verse 9. The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. For those reading the Bible, we have moved into 1 Kings chapter 1 and 2. And in Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 48. Thoughts for the day. A determined person will do more with a pen and a paper than a lazy person will accomplish with a personal computer. An invincible determination can accomplish almost anything. And in this lies the great distinction between great men and little men. Your road to success should always be under construction. Motivation for today. If you are not criticized, you may not be doing that much. On Today in History, Beethoven, 1810, publishes his latest composition, The Fear Elise. 1937, the world's longest suspension bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco is officially open, and its length is 4,200 feet. I don't know if that record still stands, but if you know, share that with us. In 1941, World War II, Athens falls to German invaders after 180 days of Greek resistance. 1950, Britain officially recognizes the state of Israel. 1966, sadly, the Abortion Act legalizes abortion in Britain. In 1993, in a referendum, Eritreans votes overwhelmingly for independence from Ethiopia. In 2005, the Airbus A380 takes to the skies for the first time. Here's your personal story for today. Matthew 28, 20. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And for today, we'll go through the references in Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Now, last words spoken before death reveal a person's character and priorities, the ways and reasons in which he lived his life. So we should pay close attention to the last words spoken on earth by our Lord Jesus Christ found at the end of today's verses. Before his ascensions, Jesus entrusted his disciples the command we know as the Great Commission in verses 18 to 20. Its foundation is the authority and presence of Christ. God gave him all authority, which he demonstrated in his victory over death and sin. To have him always by our side is a tremendous encouragement and comfort and perhaps the ultimate fulfillment of his name, Emmanuel, God with us. Because Jesus has all authority, we can and must do what he said. Go and make disciples. So where are they? How many disciples do you have? You know, get busy. Jesus had 12. Maybe you could find one or two. Somebody to mentor, somebody to share with, somebody to build up and encourage, advise, and, and go find them. Go implies the movement uh, or change of some sort is required. So we think of Abraham and his journey of faith. He was told, hey, leave your homeland, leave your family, and, and go. And make disciples means we're not trying to score mere converts. It's not a sales contest, but to grow and cultivate lifelong Christians. And that ultimately is how revival happens. You find one, somebody else finds one, somebody finds two, and we have a revival. This reminds us that salvation is an ongoing process, beginning with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Without the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. And continuing with toward Christ's likeness through the forgiveness of sins and personal growth and finishing with glorification, the climax of God's redemptive work. So God's vision for salvation is global. So we are to go to all nations and all races. The work of preaching the gospel must include baptizing believers in water and spirit and teaching them to obey everything Jesus said. To live worthily and wisely, we must govern our lives by these parting words of our Lord. 
Here's some devotional thoughts for today. Now, affliction. When we accept it with patience and humility, it can lead to a deeper and fuller life. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, David wrote. But now I keep your word. And that's in Psalm 119. And again, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn thy statutes. Verse 71. Pain, far from being an obstacle to our spiritual growth, can actually be the pathway to it. If we allow pain to train us, it can lead us closer to God and into his word. It is often how our father graciously shapes us to be like his son. He's the potter. We are the clay. Let's be moldable. And gradually it gives us courage, compassion, contentment, tranquility. We long and we pray for. Without pain, God would not accomplish all that he deserves to do in and through us. And, and I can say from personal testimony that there have been a number of cases where my greatest learning came through tragedy, the, the loss of a wife, the, the uh, uh, sudden disruption of this, the, the job change, the, the uh, uh, you know, almost dying from a, uh, a ski accident. And, and many of these things do teach, as it says right here, the word of God living out in our lives are having to rely on him, stepping out in faith. And we know many people that do go through suffering. And if they're there, we are there to support them, build them, encourage them, and remind them that this will lead to something good. You know, the, the sun will rise in the morning for anyone that is listening to this that is going through a suffering moment. So are you one whom God is instructing through the uh, afflicting of suffering and pain. So by his grace, you can endure his instructions patiently. He can turn the trial into a blessing and use it to draw you into his power and into his word. He can also teach you the lesson he intends for you to learn and give you his peace amid your difficulties. So the Bible tells us, count it all joy when you fall into various temptations that's james 1 2 so god is making more out of you than you ever thought possible so what about luck second peter 1 3 says according to his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue now you, you've heard this people go around and they say such phrases as hey i wish you luck and it's my lucky day. Oh, it was only luck. Uh, always bad luck. That seems to follow him around. If it hadn't just been for my luck, luck is just a chance happening. Luck may or may not be. It's not a sure thing, as some may think. You hear people say, push your luck, out of luck, in luck. And luck is the furthest thing from the truth in the matter. Isn't that just the fact? You know, when preparation meets opportunity, that's the definition of luck. And uh, so let's prepare. Let's be ready. And then when that chance happens, we can act upon it and make our own luck. But that's a topic for another day. I happen to think that there is nothing happening or going to happen by chance. There is a reason for everything, whatever it may be. There is not one person here on earth by luck. Scripture says the very hairs on your head are, are known by him, and they're numbered in Matthew 10, 30. There's no child here by chance or luck or good or bad. Scripture tells us in several instances that he formed us in the belly and he knew us before. There may be children that arrive on earth without being wanted or planned but, uh, or even prepared for, but they aren't here by chance. God has placed everyone there. He's got a divine plan, and he directs all the steps there. So we find ourselves telling someone, good luck on your new job. And, and it's a saying, you know, if you say that, don't beat yourself up. Uh, but you find out the, what we need, and luck may not even be what we mean. What we want them is to have success in those areas. Yet we use the dictionary word, uh, that means a, a chance happening. We should tell these people that we pray they will have great success in their new job and that they will have all the words, the wisdom and the courage to do all the tasks assigned to them and shine a light to those around them. 
And, you know, and maybe that's what they're really looking for. So the Bible teaches us that faith is what we need and plenty of it. It says that the just shall live by faith. And, and that's not a far cry from luck, a chance happening. Faith will sustain us. Luck will fail us. Noah, by faith, saved his family when he listened to the Lord's warnings and built an ark. He could have stood around like the rest of the people, paid no heed, and just waited on luck uh, to bring him through. He wouldn't have survived. He, wouldn't have, he would have been disobedient, in fact, just like the rest that didn't want to listen to the warning. Would you rather rely on your luck or place your faith in the power of the Holy Ghost with whom all things are possible? Do you want to chance being ready when Christ returns for his church? Or do you want to have the assured faith in Jesus Christ? Anyone that wants luck can have it. We live by faith all the time. And that's the best way to go. Well, that's all I got for today. Again, a reminder to subscribe to the channel. A couple of fun facts. India, they have 50 million monkeys. and I don't know if this is true, believe it or not. A mule won't sink in quicksand, but a donkey will. Here's your closing thought. Lord, give me an insight so that I can understand my true value the way you see me. Here's your joke for the day. Let's start with a riddle, though, and let you think about it. What is it the more you take, the more you leave behind? The more you take, the more you leave behind. Stick around for the answer. Well, man and woman, they've just divorced and on their way out of the courthouse, they're killed. They die. They go up to heaven and there they are standing there. And, and suddenly, after a while, they have second thoughts about it. And they decide, well, we want to get married. So they go to St. Peter and he says, look, we want to get married. We, we realize our mistake and, and we want to live eternity. And St. Peter says, that's ridiculous. You, you can't do that. This is heaven. He says, well, we really we're committed to it. He says, okay, we'll come back in 15 years. So they wait and, and they're still blissfully in love. And, you know, it's 15 years goes by like that. And there they are and they come and say, okay, we're ready to get married. St. Peter says, okay, I think you're in luck. And so the minister of religion comes and they get married. It's a wonderful ceremony. All the angels are there. Well, a couple of weeks later, just things aren't working out. It's just, again, the same things, the troubles they had on earth. And uh, there's no communication and they just end up separating. They go to St. Peter and they say, look, that's it. We want a divorce. We made a mistake. And St. Peter said, wait, you made me look for 15 years to find a minister of religion. And now you want a lawyer? Back to the riddle. What is it? The more you take, the more you leave behind. And the answer? Footsteps. That's all I got. Thanks for coming. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.